Hello everyone, welcome. This is Christine with Powder Crafts and today I'm doing a project for Scrapping for Less. I'll be using this stamp set here called um, Tiny Townie Faye Loves Fall. It is from Stamping Bella. I will also be using this paper pad from Cartabella. It is a six by six double-sided pattern paper pad. It is called Fall Break. Has some really great fall images that kind of like a vintage feel to it and I'm super excited by some of the patterns in here. So just giving you a quick look at what kinds of pattern papers are in here. We have some solids, some tiny patterns, some scenes, some big patterns, so all kinds of um, really great um, pattern papers in here. So because my stamp is more of a scene, um, I'm just stamping on some white cardstock and I'll color it in and I'm going to use a die to cut it out instead of, you know, coloring the image and cutting the image out. This is going to be more of a scene. So I'm using my Misty because I want to make sure that I don't miss any spots, um, especially like her clothes. Sometimes when I stamp, I don't do such a great job and some lines are not as dark as other lines. So grabbing my Misty, taking out the foam piece for it because this is a rubber stamp. It has um, some foam on it, so you do not need that other piece. I'm using some Gina K Black Amalgam ink to uh, stamp my image. So go ahead and ink up my stamp stamp it with my Misty, and I am super impressed with how it came out the first time around. I really don't need the second stamping, but I'm gonna do it anyway and just kind of darken those lines up a little bit. But other than that, I'm really happy with how that stamped out. It was it was pretty even and really nice. So just for fun, we're gonna go ahead and darken those lines, and then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and let's color our scene. So for my Copic markers, I do try to leave the caps up so you can see the which which marker I'm using. And for my Chow markers, I try to lay them on the side so you can see the numbers, the letters and numbers, because um, the Chow markers don't have them up top. So like here you can see I'm using YR07. Now some of my coloring combinations are not typical. I do not have some what you would say like maybe traditional you know your light medium and dark shades in the same color families. Um, I don't have a lot of markers so I just kind of mix and match what I have. So for my little pumpkin here I'm using some YRs and I'm also using just a Y marker and so I colored that in, then I took my darkest color, the YR07, added some dark lines, and then took the lightest YR marker I used and just kind of blended them a little bit so the line wouldn't be so harsh. Adding just a couple of different greens. My greens, I go between the YGs and the Gs, um, again, because I don't necessarily have all the wonderful marker combinations that some people um, do some really beautiful coloring with. So coloring in these apples using a variety of different R's and they are all R's. <clears throat> really happy with how those turned out. Now this paper I am coloring on is just some hundred pound cardstock I picked up at a local supply store. I do not recommend it. It was fairly inexpensive. I but like it was buy one, get one free. And I was like super excited until I used some Copic markers on it. And it is so bad. Um, my markers tend to bleed a lot um, with this paper. So um, not really going to mention what it is because I don't recommend anyone uses it. So um, I do have to be kind of careful with my coloring. So if I go out of the lines, I'm really sorry. <laughs> not that I think anyone really thinks about those sorts of things. So anyway, I'm just coloring in her jacket. I wanted it to kind of be purpley and I don't have a lot of purples. I have some BVs and I have a couple of V colors. So I kind of try to make them blend. And sometimes um, 
they can be really difficult to blend. So sometimes you have to kind of use a tip to tip technique, which I don't really show on camera if I used any of those, which is where you take one, um, like maybe your darkest and your lightest and you kind of like touch the tips to each other to kind of get the darker onto the lighter marker. And then sometimes you can do that to kind of blend. And that works well, especially if you're like me and you're limited on your colors, but you still want to have some of that great shading. So my inspiration for the color choices, um, I wanted her outfit to kind of be um, like fallish colors, but yet still sort of girly. Um, I have a few little girls in my life and I always love the outfits they pick together. Not anything that traditionally other people would probably put together, but they're little kids and they don't care. They just love these little tights with this little purple jacket or the green little shirt underneath. Um, so I just, th that was kind of my inspiration for, for coloring the color choices of her outfit. So as you can see for her skin tones, I'm trying to put these chow markers so that you can see the colors that I am using. Um, just a couple of different colors for her skin tones. I'm using just a couple of different um, E markers for her hair. Um, I think I use E15, E18, and then there's just one that, I know the color's brown, I don't know the exact number. This brown color is kind of like, got a little bit of like a auburn feel to it when you do the color. So I like to add that in to kind of, you know, give it more of an auburnish kind of color hair. So I want her flower to be unique and kind of stand out from some of the darker colors, but I still wanted it to kind of be, I don't want it to be too bright. So I used a couple of different, um, a dark yellow and a light yellow for the flower, having her hat be green. Now for these leaves, I just kind of grab an orange, a red, a yellow, um, and a green color. And I'm just kind of adding lines onto them to, resemble the changing colors. If you've seen leaves in real life, when they change colors, there are a multitude of colors on it. It's not just yellow, it's not just red. Um, I saw one the other day, it was so pretty. It was like this dark red around all of the edges and it was like this green color on the inside. And it was just so pretty. So that was kind of the inspiration for some of these leaves, just making them different kinds of colors. So for the the grass, I am just using different colors of green to flick the blades of grass and using this lighter one that I have um, available, which is what that's a G24 to kind of fill in. Some of the little flick marks I got from the darker greens kind of blended a little bit. So I'm just adding a few more of those because I want those lines to be a little harsh. I want it to look like blade, blades of grass. Now, where she is and where the pumpkin is, I want it to be a little darker, like there's a little shadow there. So I brought in a gray marker, which is a great way to add some darkness to your image if you don't have a dark color marker for that. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the little basket of apples that she is carrying. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the sky. This is the lightest blue marker that I have. So I'm really trying to not lay down too much color. Um, and I'm just sort of flicking it all over. At first I was like, oh man, these are some pretty harsh lines. But then I kind of liked it. I was like, well, if the wind's blowing, the leaves are around her, you know, kind of maybe gives it that image that there's, that there's wind blowing. Um, I'm adding the colorless blender just to kind of soften some of the harsh, harsher lines of where the marker touched the paper. And I just let it sit there and dry for a minute. And I'm gonna bring in a die to cut the little scene. So when I get that place where I want it to be, I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead, cut that. Now I decide I need a mat for underneath her. So I grab this solid color from the paper pad and I'm using just the next size up die to cut that out. So it's a perfect little mat. Now, when I cut this, you'll see that my grass kind of, you know, didn't go over far enough. So I'm gonna grab that light green marker again. And as I fill it in, because the Copic markers had already dried from earlier, it really showed that I added the marker there. So I'm just kind of going over the whole area. 
so that it, it that you don't have that line there. And then I'm just grabbing a couple of those dark markers and adding some blades of grass going out to those edges so that it all looks like, you know, one big scene. And there's no white. I'm not worried about the sky on the on, on the edges. Um, you know, it's kind of like a mixture of, of uh, white and blue, and I think it's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my scene on my little mat here, and then I'll put that aside for now. And then I'm going to grab the pattern paper. So on there, I wanted to see how much of the card front this in this scene is going to fill. And it is going to fill up pretty much the whole front. But I do want some pattern paper for, you know, a panel underneath it. So what I do is I'm taking a look at the pad. I'm thinking I want some leaves or pumpkins because the image has leaves and pumpkins. But um, because the scene piece takes up so much room, I'm going to probably need a smaller print of pattern because it's just going to get lost. So I'm, I know I'm going to cut this with my stitched rectangle die. So I'm kind of grabbing that to get an idea of how much of this pattern is going to show behind this, you know, scene piece that I have. So this one's perfect because there's lots of different colors. Um, there's nothing to get lost behind it. So I'm like, you know, what? that's pretty good. But I'm going to look around because I still get this idea. I want to use the leaves or pumpkins. So I find this pumpkin. It's kind of a small print. But you see how those pumpkins kind of just get lost and they just they don't look like pumpkins. So I'm like, all right, well, that's not going to work. Let's try the leaves. And I'm like, ooh, I kind of like this. You can sort of see the leaves. But then again, it is it, it, you can't. So I'm going to take it out anyway, because I'm still thinking about it. So I think I'm going to cut at this point. This is all thinking. I know what the card looks like now. But anyway, um, I'm like, I, I just want to cut. I'm going to cut it and just see what it what it's like. So then I grab the other paper and be careful when you pull your paper out because you'll rip it like I did. Um, so I'm going to cut both the patterns out because I I love both. I think both kind of go with it, but um at this point i really don't know which one i want to use so i'm going to go ahead and cut them both so i take them over to my cuddle bug and this is me just thinking i i thought about this for a really long time <laughs> and then i just go ahead and cut them both out i decide you know what? i'm going to use both pieces i do end up using this um much much smaller print very colorful for the background on the scene for the front so that is how that's going to work but i really 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 liked this um falling leaves paper so i'm going to put this on the inside of my card which is something i don't normally do and i'm using this mini scalloped stitch circle die with this well i use the die to cut the white cardstock for my sentiment and I'm going to stamp the sentiment on there. And the sentiment says, I'm so thankful to have you in my life. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp that right in the center. This circle was actually the perfect size for the, for the sentiment. And I love how it looks with the little leaf paper. It's just very simple and it's pretty. And this could totally just be a whole other card. But it's the inside of this one. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm making sure that the top, the side, and the bottom are all kind of look even to have an even number of amount of space. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And that is the inside of my card. But I think I'm going to probably make that a, an actual card card later because um, it can make some really great, simple, simple cards that look like that. So I was pretty happy. Let's just go ahead and finish putting together the front of this card. So I've got that busy but really tiny print pattern paper. I went ahead and put that on with some um, ATG, just some, you know, tape runner. And I'm adding this panel with foam tape. The foam tape that I purchase is from, it's the Scotch 3M foam tape. I get it on Amazon. This is the three quarter inch foam tape. I think there's half and there's three quarter. Um, half is probably what a lot of people use, but it 
I found this, it's three quarter inch. It is a little bit cheaper. I do find that I have to cut it maybe a little bit more than if I had the half inch, but I am just as happy with this. So now the fun part, I'm like, all right, now I finally get to add a little bit of bling. Um, just meaning some glitter. I was going to add like some enamel dots and like, but then I decided I didn't want it to be too busy because the scene kind of has a lot going on. So I'm just adding some Wink of Stella clear glitter brush to my leaves. And I'll add it to her flower. And this is where I go, oh, I forgot to color some leaves in. Just grab a green marker. And I even see now, I still missed a spot on her jacket. You see that little white dot there? So I'm gonna have to go grab a purple marker and, and, and fill that in. But um, anyway, adding just a little bit of white gel pen to add a little bit of highlight. Now, when I add white gel pen, I have learned to put the Wink of Stella on after. The gel pen doesn't like Wink of Stella um, before. So go ahead, add a little bit of shimmer to the pumpkin. So this is it, guys. This is the card for today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more and you're not already, hit that subscribe button. But until next time, bye.